Reed has always been fair in his assessment of the lawsuit. Doesn't mean he has said he agrees with me. I just said he's been fair in his assessment. It's a difficult situation, especially for somebody who's new into our community. I mentioned on his show my appreciation for the altar persons that did meet with me. These were altar persons Don Van Akron, Richard Manning, Vicki Meyer, and Marilyn Montemeyer. I meant to, but forgot to mention altar persons Jeff Radke, Jim Groff, Gene Kittleson, and Dennis Bauman, who had wanted to meet but were unable to. I'm sorry for neglecting that. I am still perplexed, though, that the other altar persons did not re want to receive the information that I had. I, uh, I just can't see how having information could be a bad thing. Um, I listened to many of you say, and this has been said by many of you, if it's not broken, why fix it? Well, it is broken if the city is in a lawsuit over the use of room tax. Many businesses that depend on tourism are behind in their payments to the city. This can be checked, the city records. And um, again, the debt, if I win this lawsuit, is just tremendous to the average taxpayers. I lose sleep over this. That's why I bring it up constantly. It's kind of like, it. do I want to win the lawsuit? I want to win it because I want misuse of room tax to stop, but I also don't want over $200 added to every tax bill in this city. My attorney will not waste any more time trying to get a settlement. He said it will have to come from the city. I would strongly suggest that all of you do just that. Instruct the city attorney to get into negotiations for a settlement. It's called negotiations. When I offered a settlement, that wasn't the end. You could have told the city attorney, the terms aren't acceptable. This is what we instruct you to go back to the table. I would suggest no more petty games, lay your cards on the table. If the offer is reasonable, it's going to be a win-win for all involved. Thank you all for your time again. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Uh, finally on the list is Frank Kozan. Mr. Kozan, can you give me your home address again, please? 2829 Erie Avenue. And would you please tell me when four minutes have expired? Excuse me, when what? Uh, when four minutes have four expired. Four minutes, certainly. And you will have five minutes. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to the Common Council again. The Sheboygan Press reported that the potential location for the new police station has been narrowed down to six sites. It's interesting to see that the new first choice is next to City Hall, a site that was never mentioned in all the previous debate over where to build the new police station. And looking at today's agenda, another site has just surfaced, that is the Vandervaart property. These are two widely differing sites, each hold unique possibilities that are worth exploring. Now these two new possibilities, I believe, are a result of a superior process, one which has involved many people offering creative ideas instead of just a small group, that is the Building Use Committee, offering a limited range of options and then manipulating the way the vote would go in order to get the result they desired and thus thwart the desire of the people who wanted to save Sheridan Park. It looks like the new process has already shown more process, promise for finally accomplishing what everybody wants, which is, of course, the long overdue construction of an up-to-date station that fully meets the needs of our police force now and in the future. Please think about expansion. I hope that the next steps toward making the ultimate selection of the site will display an effort to consider all significant facts that bear on the selection and neither overlook nor ignore important items that should go into this very important decision. I bring this up because of what was not brought to light in a timely fashion during the debate over using Sheridan Park. It was never brought to light that the TIF tax incremental finance district for District 1 was going to expire and that about a million dollars was going to go to the city's coffers instead of being used to pay off the bonds which finance construction in that district. This simple fact destroys any former argument that Sheridan Park should have been the site because it would not impact the tax base. It turns out that using Sheridan Park instead of the Imperial Motel site, which of course is out of the question now, would have made a difference of 
$25,045 a year. That is for the cost of 50 cents, about 50 cents per city resident per year, a park could be preserved rather than be destroyed. Another fact that did not come to light in a timely fashion was that planning for phase three of the renewal plan has, is ready to begin. The significance of that is phase three includes Sheridan Park and the residential and commercial neighborhoods surrounding it. This simple fact is a rebuke to those aldermen who called the Sheridan Park neighborhood an area in decline. That's insulting. Rather than declining, the neighborhoods surrounding Sheridan Park are slated to be improved, and Sheridan Park itself represents an asset of unquestionable value to neighborhoods on the rise. My plea to the Common Council is to be thorough, paying attention to every conceivable detail so that when the final decision is reached, there will be no recriminations that information was held, withheld or ignored or that the process was slanted to produce a predetermined income. Uh, outcome. Please be conscientious to a fault and bring open and impartial minds to the decision-making process that can choose a site which, once and for all, will serve the best interests of every stakeholder. Now, the one final comment I would like to make is to applaud the older persons who saw fit to change their mind about using Sheridan Park and voted to rescind the previous decision. Their decision to change their minds is vindicated by the facts I mentioned before. The expiration of the District 1 Tax and Criminal Finance District and the monies it brings to you the city, thank you, totally offsets any impact to the tax base as a result of preserving Sheridan Park. It's a moot point. Doesn't matter one bit. And the onset of Phase 3 and the promising future of a rejuvenated Sheridan Park neighborhood area fully justifies their decision to change their minds. These older persons should be acknowledged for showing flexibility, open-mindedness, and courage. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kozam. That's okay. it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. Next item we have the mayor's report. Honorable older persons, if you would please refer to your, I, I suppose we can call it a blue binder, but if you would just please refer to this binder. This is a binder that I had put together for your benefit, for your use. It has information about every department that, uh, that, uh, that makes up our city government, contact persons, names, emails, vital information, just about anything you can think of is in here. If there is something that's not in here that you would like, please let me know or my secretary know and we will include it here. I've done this because I feel that it's important that you have readily available to you this kind of information. So this is for you to take home with you and carry it wherever you want to and ha use it as a handy reference tool uh, to give you the information that you need. And for the benefit of the public, we also have a copy of the same binder in my office and we have a copy at the library. So the public has also may have access to the same information that, that, that you have. I wanted to thank all the department heads. They did a, a tremendous job of putting their information together, and in particular, uh, Mary Rajar, who actually did all the, uh, the sorting and the putting it together. And it took her a while to do, but I think you will find it a, a very, very valuable, handy uh, resource uh, manual for, for your personal use. So uh, enjoy. The other thing that I would like to report to you is the, a project that I've asked former Alderman Bill Wagenman, who is our city historian, to work on. And that is a, uh, a project that came about as a result of a few people asking, why haven't you done this? Why hasn't the city done this? And from what I understand, it's been talked about before, but it's never been done. And that is, why have we not recognized part-time mayors? For the longest time, Sheboygan had part-time paid mayors. The only ones that are recognized are the full-time uh, full mayors. So we are doing the, the research, hopefully get the names, the dates they serve, perhaps a little photo. We'll be asking the public uh, 
if they have any information regarding any other kins or relatives that, the, that the, they know of that would serve as mayors to, to please help us out with uh, putting this project together so that we can properly honor all these part-time mayors that have served us so well. The next thing that I'd like to report to you is just a brief update on the Sheridan Park Revitalization Program. It's still going on. It's, it's so easy to say you need to move a little faster, things aren't happening. Well, things are happening, but they're happening at the planning stage. There's meetings being held, there's people being talked to, uh, there's conceptual framework of the phases being put together. Uh, Susan Hart is doing a tremendous job working on this project, but you have to understand that the 4th of July parade and festivities are taking a huge amount of her time right now. It's not including my time and Mary Rager's time. So until we get that project done and, and complete it, or going, then we'll be working full blast on the Sheridan Park Revitalization Project. But again, bear in mind, that that's not me. We're not working on it as, as we move along. We are, but it, it's a lot of the planning uh, part of it that's being worked on. And I may add that since the last time that I talked about this, there have been other people in the community that have stepped up to the plate and want to help also. So the response has been quite fantastic. The other thing that I would like to share with you tonight is if you would please, and I'm sure some of you do, but for those of, do of you who don't, visit our website. It's undergoing change, positive change, good change. And we're trying to make that website, Margie is doing such a great job with it, but we're trying to, we're trying to make that website user friendly. We want to make sure that people can navigate that website easily and without very, without very little difficulty. Because you can't access the information, most people will just quit and say, I'm done. So it has to be very user friendly, very easy to navigate. And then the other thing that we're working on is making sure that the information that's provided on our website is current and that it's kept current. Because if information is not current, it doesn't do the person who wants to retrieve that information any good. It's not good, it's old information. So as, as you uh, go through your day, if you have some time, please visit the website. Again, if you have suggestions to make that make, will make that website <coughs> more attractive, more user friendly, please, please make those suggestions to my office or to uh, Margie. The whole goal of this is how do we present ourselves to the community? How do we present ourselves to other municipalities or to people who would like perhaps to come visit or find out a little bit about Sheboygan? That's what it's all about. How do we present our, ourselves in the best light possible? And that's what we're going to work very hard at, using all sources of media, medium, and one of them will be the, the website. And finally, one thing that I wanted to talk about is just share with you some thoughts. Again, people, everywhere I go, grocery store or anywhere I go, I always have people stop me and, and talk to me. And that's part of the, the fun part of being mayor, I think, when you're out in the community talking to people. But I've been asked lots and lots of times, why don't you respond back when the radio is talking about the city and the mayor? I don't purposely. And by that I mean that I will not engage in debate over the radio or the newspaper. I think the proper forum for debate is right here. And this is where we conduct our business. But I think more importantly, I don't have time. My day is so busy, it's incredible. I mean, I would have to sit there in front of the radio for three or four hours to really get a full grasp of what's being said and how I should call in and respond. And then it would be just a back and forth type of thing. So really, I don't have time. It's a very busy, the days are very busy. Because I don't, I don't want, I don't want that interpreted to mean that I will not stand up for the city or that I will not fight for a position or so forth. I just can't. I don't have the time and I'd rather not debate issues via the public radio. What I will be doing, and th thanks to Mr. Negri, is have a 30-minute program, and I don't know what Mr. Reed's going to call it, but it's a 30-minute program where the mayor goes to the radio station and talks for 30 minutes about things that are going on in the city. And again, if any one of you have anything, anything that you'd like for me to share with the community, let me know. 
but the talk will be at 11.30, the Tuesday after the second council meeting, which is tomorrow. So I will be on the radio for 30 minutes. So that is, if the offer is still good, and talk to the public about key issues in the community. But I will not respond on a daily basis as, as the radio talk goes along. And then finally, just to, as, uh, to finish off the, uh, the report, I talk about open government and responsive government. And I do so because I believe it. I believe it very, very strongly. So if anybody has any issues that they would like to talk about, all they have to do is come to the office, call, set a meeting. I'll even come to your house if you want to talk to me there. But the idea is that if there are questions in someone's mind about city issues that I can share with you, all you have to do is call. And I will be glad to talk to anyone. Thank you very much, and we will move on. <clears throat> Consent agenda. 6-1 through 6-26, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Before, um, before I make a motion on the consent agenda, I'd just like to thank you and your staff for, for putting this um, blue binder together, as well as all the department heads for supplying all the information, because it was something that I think we desperately needed. I've been an alderman for, for quite a few years now. I don't think we've ever had a handy reference like this, other than the city clerk when you were looking for some information <laughs> on what departments were doing and so forth. So um, it's nice to have this. You're welcome. <clears throat> and then with that, I would move that all items 6-1 through 626 on the consent agenda, that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and we pass all resolutions. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that on document 613, the beverage operator's license 6796 be pulled out and voted separately. Okay. There's a request to pull 613 for a separate vote. That's an RC by law and license and recommending various, various, granting various licenses. licenses. Is there a motion to adopt the report of committee? I just need number license number 6796 taken off of the lawn licensing and voted on separately. Just that one. Which one? Just her name on here. She just wants that pulled off the. OK, we are pulling out uh, license, license number 6796, uh, Victoria Meyer. Beverage operator. Uh, beverage operator's license out. And I believe you want to abstain from that? Right. Correct. You need to abstain. Okay. So, is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Is there a motion and a second? Any discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. Any other item to be pulled out? Otherwise, we will vote on 6 1 through 6 26, except in 6 13. Yes. The balance. You would do the balance. The balance of 613. Yes. Stand corrected. And there is a motion on the floor, I believe, in a second. Under discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Would you like a roll call? I think you have to have it. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Segali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Bauman? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Communications and petitions 627 to 633 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 634 by city clerk submitting a communication from Alderman Ratke, Serta, and Sigali stating that they are submitting another site to the council for consideration for the new police station. 
the Vandervark property along South Business Drive from Broadway North to just south of Georgia Avenue and requesting that this site be submitted to Zimmerman for evaluating, for evaluate, to evaluate during, during their 30 day window as seventh possible site for a police station. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, would like to take and that along with Document towards the back here, 672, if we may, and vote to file 634, and then take 670, not 6, not 672, 6, 672. Oh, in your hand. I don't follow 678, you I'm sorry, 678. Got the number wrong there. Okay. The resolution authorizing the Zimmerman Design Group to form police department uh, of the studies, site studies and add the yes. Vandervaard property to that. I'd like to amend that to add Vandervaard and to delete the property on South Business Drive and Broadway Avenue and to also delete the bus transfer station. Second. Okay, so could you say it again, Alderman Racky, you want to delete what? Property on South Business Drive? We want, to we want to delete the property at South Business Drive and Broadway Avenue. And Broadway. Mm -hmm. And also the bus transfer station and add the Vandervaart property in its place. So you're going down to five then? We'll actually take it down to five. And there was a second? Okay, take thank you. Both like that, Steve? Take, take both like that, or should we act on one piece? Is he making a motion? Pardon me? The motion to, to pass. Okay. Clarify the motion here. Alderman Radke, are you making a motion to accept and file your RO and to make an amendment? Yes, ma'am. At the same time. Do we want to just do one at a time, maybe? I think we need we to can do take one. them one after another, but sure. then we do it one sure. at a time and accept and file sure. the RO first. Sure. Would that be okay? Sure. Okay. okay. We're gonna. Uh, there's a motion to accept and file RO 634. Is there a second? There's a motion to second. Under discussion. Do you want a roll call too? Yeah. Call a roll, please. Oh, somebody call it buzzed in. I'm sorry. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I'm not understanding this process. I'm not understanding why this is being filed, uh, 634. You know, and then uh, I'm, I guess I'm not understanding the whole process here. I don't understand. M me and Bonnie and Jeff submitted an, uh, another proposal, uh, another site. So why is this now being filed? Alderman Sigali, what this is is the RO would actually be accepting and placing on file and approving your request is what the motion is for this. You have in the document to submit this site to Zimmerman by voting yes, that's exactly what you're doing is to submit this to Zimmerman. Okay. Okay. Thank is that you. okay? Does that make is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so motion to accept and file report of officer six thirty four. Please call the roll. Um, Eberg. Aye. Serta. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? And Deberg? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. Now Alderman Radke? Ald Alderman Radke, if you'd like. You would probably need to make a motion first, Alderman Radke, to pass the resolution, and then we'll go I into the I would like amendment. to make a motion on Resolution 678 that the be put upon its passage and would like to amend it also. Okay. Let's get a second. Get a second. There's a motion, a second. Okay. Move to amend. Okay, now, Your Honor, I'd like to amend it to uh, delete the bus transfer station and the property at South Business Drive and Broadway Avenue and add into it the Vandervaart site. Second. There's a motion and a second to amend accordingly. Alderman Susha. Is it under discussion? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. On the amendment. Um, thank you. Um, I think it does make good sense to eliminate the site right across the street from Vandervaart because um, if you want us to consider the Vandervaart site, that, that just makes sense rather than spend $5,000 to study each site. 
However, I don't agree or understand any rationale in regards to eliminating the bus transfer point. We have not been given any information. We don't know if that site would cost us one penny. So until the investigation is done and thoroughly looked into, um, I think that we should uh, not <coughs> eliminate the bus transfer point. Um, so if I can amend his amendment, I'd like to keep that one on the table. I suppose you can amend. How does that work, Steve? I think Alderman Perhaps we should ask the division a question on, on the two documents. The two proposals okay. are a separate vote on each Thank you. There you go. And Alderman Susha, I will have to kindly call you and address the chair appropriately. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. What do we got the motion? Okay, um, what we'll do is we'll vote on the amendment. We'll vote on the South Business Drive and Broadway site to eliminate that. That's the first one on the division of the question. So we'll do that one first to eliminate that from the res. Okay. Everybody understand that? Okay, call the roll. Um, Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manning? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. and E. Berg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Next. The next one will be to eliminate the bus transfer station, and I vote would be to eliminate that from the list. Ski Hall. Paul McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. On, on the discussion, um, a week ago or two weeks ago when uh, we had the Committee of the Whole meeting and, and this site was discussed and, and Ron McDonald um, gave us a, a semi-presentation as to what time frame this was going to take, um, he was correct. Uh, it's, it's an unknown time frame and it could stretch out as many as nine or ten years and I don't think we want to wait for federal approval and things like that that we were going to need if we're going to use that transfer station. Therefore, I will support eliminating this from um, from this list and, and going that route. Okay. Any more discussion? <clears throat> okay. Please this will be to room. eliminate the bus transfer from the list. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. And Serta. Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. The motion is amended. Um, <coughs> yes. Paul McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that uh, the resolution as amended be put upon its passage. Second. Motion to second. Under discussion. See the attorney. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just can't find my document in the packet, but I believe that's the one uh, authorizing Zimmerman to do it for X number of dollars. Yes. And here's the document. Uh, probably ought to be revised to reflect that not to exceed that price or something. You know, if we're uh, having them study only five sites instead of six, hopefully we don't have to say, pay the same lump sum payment. Uh, I think we got Alderman Stefan first. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I just had a point of order. To my understanding, there were three separate things. There was adding the Vandiver property, and we voted separately on the two we were subtracting, but did we actually vote on adding that? This is what we're going to come on now. But that's amending it, right? I mean, we have to make an amendment to that? As amended. It was, and I, this resolution would be as amended to take the Vanderbilt property and put that on well, the we list. We voted twice, and both times we were taking something off. I don't. Do we have a move to add something? We had a division of the question. We actually. But did we vote on the adding? Is what I'm saying. I don't separately? think we did. I think we voted twice on deleting different properties. <coughs> I don't think we voted on adding anything. There was a vote to uh, accept and adopt the right. uh, communication okay. to add that site okay. to the list. I'm sorry. Is it okay. Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. So you'd like a, a motion to, um, to uh, amend the document that instead of the lump sum amount of 28735 for six, it should be reduced appropriately to an amount not to exceed for five sites, something like that? I would so move. 
You got that? Is there a second? Second. Did we put a number on it just not to no. exceed? <laughs> I'm not to exceed number, but we have to kind of divide it out. Okay. I, excuse me. I think we have an amount for five for six sites now, right. and this site is will make it how many five? That means five. five. We should be able to do it mathematically and put that number. I think it was. It's right here. Uh, Attorney McLean. Here. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, Rich Gebhardt would know how that number was arrived at, whether it was so much per site or... or okay, uh, I should ask him. Mr. Gebhardt, you're going to be put on the spot here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I may have to run down to get the detail that uh, Mr. Sabanash had uh, sent to us. Do you have it there? Sure. Alderman oh, okay, Burke. great. Alderman Burke, could you hand this to Rich, please? Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Um. I'm trying to look at what they projected here is the uh, amount of time that each one of the staff members are going to devote to this project. Um, so right now they're looking at $24,000 as relating to their uh, hourly rates for their staff members uh, as, as part of the 28000 and the other is kind of a, a fixed amount um, for their amounts. So I'd assume uh, if you're going to drop one site that uh, you could adjust it by four thousand dollars. Okay. Alderman Groff, does that make? Yes. Uh, Thank you. I would make a motion that uh, it should not um, not exceed then uh, twenty-four thousand seven hundred thirty-five dollars. Second. Or second. That's part of my. That's all right. Give me the Original. amount again, Alderman yes. Graff. Twenty-four thousand what? Seven thirty-five. Okay, thank you. Okay, there's a motion and a second. You got that? Yep. Now we're going to vote the, on the, the amendment, amendment to, to the original resolution. Yep, this is to the dollar process. amount we're amending. Right. Okay. Please call the roll. Graff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, Serta, and Davis. Aye. Now that is as amended. The motion is, please explain it. Yeah, Your Honor. Um, yes. I would move um, that as amended, the resolution be put upon its passage. Mm -hmm. There's a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Alderman Susha, under discussion. Thank you, Mayor. I have a a question. Um, I see that we're authorizing them to perform this, but do we need to put it in writing and form a contract and have them sign it, or just is this authorization, the way this is written, acceptable, um, the way it's written? Do we need to firm it up a little and make it more legal with signed contracts? Attorney McLean. Oh, Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I, attached to our resolution is um, a letter from Mr. Sabinoff. Uh, where he outlines exactly what they will be doing and um, outlining uh, exactly what they will be doing during week one in their timetable, week two, three, four, and um, that results in a proposal that if we accept this and vote on it, it's their proposal on their contract. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. You know the, do you know what we're voting? Okay. The resolution is amended to include the Vanderwart property and change the dollar amount by $4,000. Bus to transfer is off. The uh, South Business and Broadway is off. So the final resolution is adding Vanderwart, dropping $4,000. Okay? I vote would do that. Okay. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. 
Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Graf? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. Is it? Yep. Fine. Okay. <coughs> 635 lies over. 636 to 649 with the ex, uh, to be referred with the notation that 640 will also be referred to public protection and safety. Resolutions introduced. <coughs> 650 by Alderman Graf, Stefan Davis, Montemeyer, Susha amending the capital improvements program mm -hmm. for the period 205-09 for the amount of debt issuance for the police facility. Paul McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. That along with uh, 651, which is a, a resolution um, to um, being an initial resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in the amount not to exceed $17 million, I would move that those two resolutions be put upon their passage. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to bring it to the public's attention that what we've just done here, what, what's trying to be accomplished, is that we're increasing the amount of debt issued from $8,792,000 up to $17 million to build a police station. We have more than doubled it. Um, this bond issuance for $17 million, in addition to borrowing that money, I believe we also have a million and a half set aside. $500,000 is already committed for the architecture fees, but we also have a million dollars set aside. So what we're really saying is we're dealing with up to $18.5 million to build the police station. Um, I think this is a little bit excessive. And the rationale behind setting the cap so high is that um, we don't want to have to come back to the council and ask for more money. Um, and on the other side of the coin, it's just a cap, which means we don't have to spend the full amount. But by the time all is said and done and the police station is up and running and the final bill is paid, there could be 16 other aldermen sitting in these seats. And all they are going to see is a document that says that we have the right to spend up to $17 million because that's what the bonding process has approved us to do. And I'm very concerned with that. Um, I would like to see us uh, cap it at $12 million and we make sure that we contract with these people that say they're going to do the work. If they say they're going to do something for $4 million, if it runs over $4 million, they have to pay the difference. Um, in the past, we have not had very good contracts with uh, the, the people that we've worked with and that's led to a lot of problems. So I'd like to see us tighten it up. Um, the $17 million would use up almost every penny of our borrowing capacity. Um, the, the money that we've already borrowed, the majority of it has gone to the tax incremental financing districts. And it's time to set some money aside for the people of Sheboygan. Yes, the people will benefit from a new police station, but they would also benefit from a street repaving program. It's time to give more back to the public, things that they can see. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I would like to amend both of these documents, if you want to start with 650, to say that uh, the bond issuance be not more than $12 million. Thank you. That's 650 or 651? The Do you want to just start with the 650? Sure. Actually, we're going to have to do that separately, so right? Because Alderman Grouse motion was for two. Mm -hmm. Second. We need a second on it for the Right, other. right. Who did? Second. Okay. There's a motion and a second to amend the $17 million to $12 million, not to exceed $12 million. You got that pretty clear? Okay. Alderman Stefan. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to respectfully disagree with uh, Alderperson Shusha. We didn't pick the $17 million 
with the intentions, well, we did pick it with the intentions we wouldn't necessarily get to it. And you know, just because we could, we had the do documents in finance with different possibilities for police station on the conservative side and on the frugal side with the best guess, Mr. Sabinash, with what we gave him, the information we gave him, how much it would cost. Uh, we took 17 million and actually the numbers he had, one was 17 and a half, I believe, and that didn't include any acquisition costs. You know, the committee looked at it and I agree, all the person Shusha thought it was too much then and, and that's her right, but it wasn't like we just took this number out of the air. This is what we felt reasonably it could cost. Is it more than we want to spend? Certainly. You know, if we don't build this thing in five years, it'll be 50 million. We could have built it 20 years ago for a million. You know, it's costs go up, everything goes up. One of the th considerations we had in committee was how big do you make it? Do you make it big enough to fit the minimum of what you need now? And then in five years and in 10 years, as soon as five years after it's built, it'll be extinct already because they'll be growing beyond that. You know, it's a, it's a fine line between building what you need now and also being a steward of the money to project what we're gonna need in the future. And that's what we tried to do on a conservative side. And I think 17 million, I don't wanna spend that much. I just really hope we don't have to, but that's what the architect says. It could, it could get to that high. So I think we need to have that availability. So I'll support this. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Governor. Um, I um, agree with Alderman Stefan. Uh, we, um, we in finance looked this over and one of the things that should be brought to everybody's attention is that the capital improvements program that first put the, um, the police station in was, was in 2002. That already is, um, we're looking at four years um, ago that being done when you're looking at the 2006 capital budget. Therefore, we, we have to add some more because back in 2002, what you could buy for $8 million is gonna cost you a lot more and as Alderman Stefan pointed out, this was not, this did not include, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the original figures did not include any land acquisition. All the properties we're looking at now, other than the, um, other than the, um, the site, um, uh, the Penn Avenue, uh, not the Penn Avenue site, but the um, New Jersey Avenue site across from the um, Municipal Service Building, um, that most of that property or a lot of that property is ours, so that would probably be the least costly. So you still have to add monies in if you're gonna buy any other property. So um, that's the reason I will support the $17 million and, and go with that. And again, it's something that you do not have to spend and there will be 16 pair of eyes regardless looking at this to see that whatever costs we can shave off of there, um, we will do that. So with that. 16 pairs of eye and one mayor. Oh, and one mayor, yes. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, question I have to put this in some context. Was the 8.8 .8 million originally uh, forecast or projected for debt uh, service bond issuance, was that uh, a number come to after the study was put together or was that prior to the study? I think Rich Gebhardt might know the answer. Mr. Gebhardt and Mr. Davis, I'll be right with, Alderman Davis, I'll be right with you. Yeah, I believe that was uh, derived from some of the studies that uh, Kimmy and, uh, did under the uh, contract with, under Steuben Rock, um, that they had made some projections for their study of the, of the police department at that time. Um, I'm not sure about their size, but I think it was smaller than 80,000 square feet at that time, and I think that's one of the factors um, that isn't within the variable. Thank you, Mr. Gebhardt. Alderman Davis. Uh, this by no means is the last whack that this council is going to have at this. I mean, uh, you know, I think it's been pointed out that if there's a bond issue, it's going to be a two-thirds two -thirds vote in here. So, I mean, you know, we're going to have ample, ample opportunity to whittle away at this 17 million here and, and uh, to play our cards right to get the right price for what we want, so. Thank you, Alderman Davis. And I must remind you to address the chair appropriately. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm kind of confused as to how a year ago we were talking 10 million for a police station and now we're talking 17 million. And yes, we don't have to spend 17 million, but I believe we are giving license to allow 17 million to be spent and I can't support spending 17 million. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Groff. Thank you. If I may just answer that, 
the eight million eight or eight million seven ninety two five hundred that was put into the capital improvements program was put in, like I said, in two thousand and two. And during capital improvements, we discuss only the current upcoming year, and the rest sit there um, until you get to that year to discuss it. Like the eight million seven would have been discussed in August of this year by the Capital <coughs> Improvements Committee, by the present Capital Improvements Committee. The change here will now make it, if it's approved, will make it 17 million, uh, that we will change that, um, that project to uh, for 2006. Okay. Alderman Manny, your second time around. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, another question for Rich. <clears throat> Play the devil's advocate. We borrow all 17 million. Uh, thereafter, in each year, we have other bond debt that is retired. In 2007, 8, 9, et cetera, uh, how much are those dollars? Thus, in consequence, how much would we have available for further capital funding for things like roads, even if we went 17 million? Our maturity schedule for our debt is uh, between six and seven million dollars per year, so you, you have that capacity. Uh, you also have some capacity gain from the increases in equalized values, uh, so generally about three percent of whatever the increases are in, in our values. So a combination of those will maybe uh, give you around maybe eight million dollars of uh, capacity of debt issuance per year. Uh, but we do have, within our capital improvements program, uh, we do have, you know, as a council policy, to issue up to $3 million a year for like streets and uh, the general infrastructure. And then there's also the tax incremental financing needs of, uh, that we have within our, our districts. And um, beyond this, too, um, you know, we're looking at this. As, this is really stage one of the of the project. Stage two is uh, once the police department vacates, we will need to uh, remodel that first floor to make it suitable uh, for the uh, other purposes that that will be in there. Um, obviously, there there will have to be some changes and some investment made to to this building also at that time. Um, so there there is capacity. Uh, ahead um, that will be generated each year, but I also see that there's probably programs going to be uh, that be currently scheduled that will probably maintain uh, our debt as as around or right at three percent of equalized values per year, which is the limit that the council has set. So you're you're, you're not really going to have much capacity beyond this project and our current capital improvements program. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gebhardt. Okay, Sue. We need to vote on the amendment, and that would be to not, ex or not more than 12 million would be borrowed instead of 17. So an I vote would be not more than 12 million. Um, Alderman Manny. No. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. No. Radke. No. Sigali. Stefan? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? No. And Kittleson? No. Um, two ayes and 14 noes. The amendment fails. Fails. Now we vote on the uh, original. Now we have a motion. Uh, there's a motion to put resolution 650 and 651 upon its passage. Mm -hmm. And there's been a second. Please call the roll. Under yes. discussion. Yep. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in regards to the next document, 651, I just wanted to uh, clarify for the, the viewing public that the city clerk has 15 days to post uh, in I assume the Sheboygan Press, a notice to the electors relating to the bond issuance. And if people read that when it's issued within the next 15 days, they will find that within 30 days after the adoption of this particular resolution, um, there is a, a choice where somebody could petition within 30 days after this appears in the press, and they could force a public referendum on the $17 million. I get a lot of phone calls 
about people complaining how high their taxes are. And I have had only one person tell me face to face that I don't care how high my taxes go, I love living in Sheboygan. But all the other calls I get relating to how high their property taxes are, people are not happy with how high they are. And I just want to bring to their attention that they have the right to actually change the decision of this council. So they have 30 days to file a petition and then it would go to public referendum. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Okay, please call the roll. This will be for passage on 650 and 651. <clears throat> Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. D. Berg. E. Berg. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. No. 14 ayes, 2 noes. Motion passes. 652 by Alderman Groff, being an initial resolution authorizing the borrowing of not to exceed $720,000 for the new fire station, providing for the issuance and sale of general obligation securities thereof, and levying a tax in connection therewith. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that resolution, as well as uh, resolution uh, 653, which is an initial resolution authorizing the borrowing of not to exceed $36 million, providing for the issuance and sale of general obligation refunding securities thereof and levying a tax in connection with that. I would move that those two resolutions be put upon their passage. There's a motion. There's a second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 654 by Alderman. Alderman Kilson amending the composition of the Mayor's International Committee to increase the membership from 9 to 13. Alderman Kilson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. There's a motion and a second. Any objections? Please, conti please continue. Okay, then I'd like to make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I could, we could just have an explanation as to why it was 16 and then went down to 9, now why it's going back up to 13. I'd appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. There was a mistake made on my part, a misunderstanding on my part, and after I made that decision and the committee was reduced to lesser numbers, I had some, uh, some of the former members come talk to me and I felt that I needed to correct something that I had done wrong. And I spoke to Alderman Kittleson and Alderman Bauman, who chairs the uh, Mayor's International Committee, and they had no objection. So this is why we have the increase now. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you for the explanation. With that explanation, I'll withhold my comments. Okay. Alderman oh. Kittleson. Well. Just, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for uh, the opportunity to talk, to come in and talk to you. We really appreciate it, and um, we're so glad that the misunderstanding was all cleared up. You're we're welcome. ready to get back to work. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Six. 55, by Alderman Montemayor granting permission to Sheboygan Lakeview Property LLC to enter upon certain property, certain city property to perform soil borings. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Sagali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. 
Manny? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 656 will be held for 663. 657 to 658 lies, will lie over. 659, 660 to be referred. 661, report of committee by Alderman, uh, by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing documents, submitting a communication from the Skybox Porch Pub and Grill requested to close St. Clair Avenue from North 8th Street to North 9th Street from August 11th through the 14th for their second annual street festival. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to accept and adopt. Second. There's a motion to accept and adopt report committee in the second under discussion. If not, please call the roll. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. And Montemayor. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 662 to be referred. 663. I'm sorry, what? Alderman Susha? Thank you. Um, I'd like to change the referral for 662. There's some new information from Public Works, so um, if we could send that document back to Public Protection and Safety, please. On 662? 662. 662. 662. You what? don't want it to go to Plan Commission? No, I received a call today. There's some new information that needs to be discussed. Okay. Thank you. So, Public Protection and Safety? Yes. Very well, thank you. Alderman Berg. This is on 663. Pardon me? This was on 663. Yes. Sorry. No, I, I, I jumped the gun. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are at uh, 663. 663. And we held over 656 for uh, 663, Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to uh, file a report of committee and adopt the resolution. Put that as passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Un you want to roll call in there? Alderman um, Berg, excuse me, did you also include the resolution in this that we held for this? Six, 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 on its passage. Thank you. You want to roll call in that? No. Oh. Any Discussion, Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When it comes to these four slips, now, as a, if I read the resolution correctly, they wouldn't have um, water or electricity or anything available to them. But are they paying rent on these slips? Or is it just something, a courtesy, that they're just made available just for you park overnight or however this is? Well, there's two aldermen asking to be uh, Recognize Alderman Bauman first. I thank you, Your Honor. The, uh, the docks would be courtesy. In other words, no cost to them. They could be there for only up to four hours. And this would be for like shopping if they wanted to go to, say, Blue Harbor as an example, to look around and uh, maybe do some other things while they're there. It's just there for that purpose. Thank you, Mr. Alderman Bauman. Alderman Berg. Uh, again, thank you, Your Honor. To, uh, we're going to elaborate on what Alderman Bauman had said. If there is a full capacity and we can rent the slips, we will. These are slips that uh, are short stub uh, uh, finger piers and the water is somewhat low, so they are not particularly attractive slips for, uh, for full-time boaters to, uh, to put their boats in the river. Uh, but if we do have transients that will be there overnight, the first priority is to rent the slips. And at that time, then they wouldn't be available to the short-time uh, individual who would come in for the three to four hours. Okay, we just, you don't need to call the roll? I can call the roll, sure. Please call the roll. Okay, um, this is to pass the resolution and accept and adopt the RC. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Ben Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. And Radke. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 
664 by Law and Licensing Committee recommending denying beverages, beverage operators license number 5471 based on failure to report all convictions on the application and non-cooperation with the committee. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Honor. I move to refer this document to the committee and I'll give you a rationale once I get a second. Second. Can we refer back? Yes. <clears throat> Motion to refer in the second under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, there was a mistake made in our procedure. We normally give two notices, second certified mail. This person did not receive both notices. He will meet with Law and Licensing on June 28th. We will discuss the issues at that, point, at that time. There's a motion and a second to refer. Any further discussion? Not all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 665 reported committee by Public Works recommending author, authorizing the study of, the estab of establishing pet friendly areas in city parks within the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Bauman. And thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt the reported committee and uh, pass the re resolution. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 666 by Public Protection and Safety recommending entering into an agreement with the Sheboygan Area School District relative to providing the public school system with school liaison officers from the Sheboygan Police Department and passing the substitute resolution. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass this resolution. There's a motion. There's a second. Motion and a second. Under discussion, <clears throat> Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure if I was reading this correctly or not. Are we cutting the time that the liaison officers are in school? I had thought it had been like nine months. I was, I thought now I'm reading six months. Are they only in there originally only six months out of the year? The, Rich, would you like to explain this or you want me? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess we, we requested the change because of the many concerns that uh, we have as well as other governments on what is going to be coming forth from Madison uh, from the legislature in, within the next couple of months. And we need to basically uh, look at our uh, commitments uh, that we have and, and address them when we have a clear picture of what the uh, state restraints are going to be on local governments. Uh, this maintains stability for the next six months with, with this agreement. It maintains it at, at four liaison officers. There's no change. Uh, the mayor and I did meet with the school administration. Uh, we did uh, discuss it. And um, I guess we're in agreement to continue communication and working together uh, to make sure that the um, schools have, you know, sufficient security um, in, in the future. And what we may have in the future is six months agreements. Uh, one of the problems that we have is they're on a different fiscal year than we are. Uh, they're on a July 1 fiscal year where we're on a calendar basis. And so this agreement that was originally uh, 12 months overlapped two of our fiscal years. And that's what our problem is right now, is that we don't know what kind of commitment we can make for the second uh, fiscal year. Uh, the same is with them. They would have a problem doing the same thing if they went on a calendar year basis, it would overlap two of their fiscal years, and that would be a problem for them also. So we may be seeing um, you know, agreement every six months coming in and, and for us to look at uh, what is, you know, can be, uh, is appropriate for both sides as far as funding levels. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I may ask, Rich, um, we will, I mean, for the protection and safety of our children, though, we will have that kind of protection in our schools because with it the way it is today, I would hate to see that that program would have to be dissolved. That's, that's an objective from, from both sides, yes. And as I said right now, for the next six months, there's no change before liaison officers staying in the schools. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to uh, clarify that basically having the liaison officers uh, 
we're making a commitment to that, but we don't we don't know what the state's going to do, so we can't spend money we don't have right now. Correct. Right. Thank you. Alderman Graff. Thank you. Um, can either the chairperson of the committee or Rich address? Um, are we collecting the same amount as we have in the, in the past, or is the dollar amount on this contract for six months changing for? Reimbursement or the ratio is, is remaining the same. It's just the length of time of the agreement has changed. That's the only change to it. But there could be a, an increase during the second six month. <coughs> that is up to both sides to to uh, negotiate, I guess. Thank you, Mr. Gephardt. I may add that uh, from our discussion with the school district, they are very concerned about the safety within the schools themselves. And they are looking right now at what options they have, and they will be addressing the security issue uh, one way or another. So it will be looked at uh, very seriously. OK. Any further discussion? OK. You don't need a roll call on this one, do you? Do? OK, roll call. Uh, Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. and Sigali. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 667 to 669 lie over. 670, 671 to be referred. Matters laid over. 555. Resolution number 360506 by Alderman Groff, Stefan, Montemayor, Susha, and Davis authorizing a transfer of, of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? If not, please call the roll. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. and Stefan. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 579, resolution number 480506 by Alderman Montemayor accepting the dedication of land for creation of a cul de sac located on North 26th Street from the Sheboygan Area School District. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could you please tell me, is there going to be something special that's going to be put on this cul-de-sac, or is there a reason that the, de the, the land for the dedication, I guess, I'm just asking if there's going to be some special purpose? Mm -hmm. Does it? All my to my own. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll bet Tom Holton can tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Holton. Thank you. Uh, it's for the school program for their home construction. So there's going to be three lots in that cul de sac and an out lot to the west, which is too small to build on currently. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question has been answered. OK. Any further discussion? You take a rule on the two. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Radke, <clears throat> Sigali, Stefan, and Susha. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 572, General Ordinance Number 80506 by Alderman Manny, Radke, Davis, Meyer, and Sigali, amending Section 18 through 55 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to update a state statute citation. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Honor. I uh, put upon the passage. Matter. There's a second. There's a motion and a second. Put the 
General Lawrence be put upon his passage under discussion? If not, please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. And Van Akron? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 573, General Ordinance Number 90506 by Alderman Susha, Vanderweel, Radke, Meyer, and Montemayor relating to the no parking any time so as to add the north side of South Pier Drive from the east curb line of South 8th Street to a point 162 feet east. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mayor. I move that this ordinance be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Bauman. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Mon I'm sorry, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. and Vanderweel. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 672, a resolution by Alderman Serda requesting a firm commitment from the Sheboygan County Board regarding its near-term intentions relating to the often mentioned 23rd Street site. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. There's been a lot of discussion and speculation between the county and the city in reference to shared services at the North 23rd Street site. And given the new administration and the, the standards of open government, what a better way than to formalize a document where all the public can see and to initiate a response from the county to alleviate the he said, she said. I think it's a, it's a good start. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Graf. Thank you, um, Your Honor. With um, the permission of the council um, and passage of this resolution, I'd like to write a letter to go along with it, inviting um, several public, several officials from the county to appear at a, um, uh, I'll be talking to Alderman Montemar, uh, to uh, have a special comment, a committee of the whole meeting so that they can come and answer these questions in person and then any other questions that maybe you have uh, available to uh, so that they can come here and speak to all of us and uh, because uh, this doesn't cover all the questions that we had at the last committee of the whole meeting and if they'd be willing to do that um, I'd include that in the letter inviting them to um, a committee of the whole meeting. I, I think the invitation would be a good idea but I think what Alderman Sarda is asking is a little bit more firmer commitment. It needs to be in writing. Okay. Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I did want to compliment you on your, your comments earlier on decorum. Um, I'm sure some people remember a couple years ago I tried to politely change the, the decorum of the people speaking and I think it can best be changed by us also you know, dictating to them the proper respect for the, the officials and I, I, I applaud your intentions there. I also applaud you, you know, your comments about not getting into he said, she said things on the radio and, and I guess I made some statements last week and some people didn't understand them and they said I did, said this on the radio. And I just wanted to defend, I think this is what we want to do. We want to get a commitment from the county. You know, people talk about storage, evidence places. We can do that anywhere. Any of those six sites, five sites, seven sites, we can store evidence with the county. The, we do a lot of shared services with the county now, and obviously we don't have a huge building now. So we can do that. What I want to know is, are they, do they have an interest in sharing services that are legitimately going to save the taxpayers money? And, and I applaud all the person Groff saying, come and talk to us. But on the other hand, I really don't have any interest in listening to Adam Payne because he doesn't have a vote on the county board. I'd like to see them bring this up for discussion, tell us what they think, the feeling of the board at this time. Now granted, it could change, but those are the people who are going to decide. If they're going to move to 23rd Street, those are the 32 people that are going to decide. It's not going to be a figurehead. Okay, so that's why I'm not against talking to them. I'm not against getting a a conceptual feeling for how they feel, how the leadership feels. Certainly they'll have some input on the county supervisors, mm -hmm. but I do think we need some kind of commitment. And I'm not saying I want a contract signed that says when they're going to move here, but the sense I get from talking to individual supervisors is it's just not something they're interested in. If they ever want to move that place, they want to move further west. They don't want to move to 23rd Street. So 
I think this is, all the person Serta should be congratulated. This is exactly what I wanted last week and I'm thankful she brought it in. Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. If, when you get down to document 683, a letter that was written by uh, Officer John Winter, you'll be able to tell what the county's intentions are because he talked to the sheriff and him. So when you get to 683, I don't think you have to have to worry about uh, getting too many uh, promises out of the county anymore. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. And just to initiate once again, not only does this involve the older persons, the administration, but it also really involves the citizens to actually see the documents at hand, and that way they can, they can make their own judgments instead of supposedly um, discussions behind closed doors. This is a great initiative. This is open door policy right here, and I think it's, it's great that we're instituting this. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Any other discussion? Not, please call the roll. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Bauman. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. <clears throat> 673, resolution by Alderman Groff and Berg directing a public hearing for a change in the zoning map for property located at 4160 and 4160A South 12th Street. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that the resolution be put up on its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 674 to be referred, 675 to be referred, 676, 677 on the amended last page to be referred, 678 we've taken care of. At this time I'd ask, uh, there's a document uh, to be called to the clerk's desk, I'd ask for a motion to call that document to the clerk's desk. Excuse me, Mayor. Um, I believe there are some more documents under other matters that Steve could do. Maybe before, other matters we, we, yeah, before we call to the clerk's desk. I'm sorry. If that would be all right. You bet. Thank you. <clears throat> other, other matters, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 679 is communication from Mary Zarafanatis, uh, 3025 North 9th Street, regarding issues with the Blue Harbor South Pier District area between the Seabird Restaurant and Pier Walk area contains a public health and safety problem. It will be referred to Public Works. 680 is a communication from Blia Nang Yang, chairperson of the Hmong Summer Festival, making request that parking be restricted in the areas of 17th Street between New Jersey and Erie Avenue during their July 30 through 31st events. And that will go to Public Protection and Safety. 681 is a communication from Manfred Holman of Joseph Holman and Sons Real Estate Corporation requesting an encroachment for an awning at 522 North 8th Street. That will be referred to City Planning Commission. 682 is an ordinance granting Joseph Holman and Sons uh, the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of North 8th Street. And that will go to City Plan Commission. 683 is a communication from John Winter, 2213 Broadway Avenue, stating his thoughts on the narrowed down sites for the police station. And then we'll be referred to Committee of the Whole. 684 is a communication from Mark Kramer, requesting that the council consider the land he owns at the southwest corner of South Business Drive and Broadway for the new police site. That will be referred to Committee of the Whole. 685 is a communication from the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce stating their contract desires they would like to see for a new room tax agreement for 2006. That would also be referred to Committee of the Whole. 686 is a resolution of Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to let you know, uh, we talked last meeting about having to notify the Chamber so our contract did not have to roll over with room tax. And I, I did show this to the city attorney beforehand, and he thought this was sufficient that they had notified us of that, you know, their intention from the review and negotiate, so we don't have to worry about doing that. Okay, thank you. Excuse oh. me, um, oh. Mayor, I'm not sure I put on Committee of the Whole. Does the Finance Committee want this preferably before Committee of the Whole or just Finance? Alderman Graff. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, I was going to ask that it be referred to finance rather than the Committee of the Whole because finance usually starts uh, and has a meeting with uh, uh, to exchange ideas and so forth and find out what we need and then we bring it on to the Committee of the Whole. Okay. And I believe the second time you tell us this, so thank you. Yeah. Finance, 685 will go to finance. Thank you, Alderman Graff. 686 is a resolution authorizing signing an easement for a mini storm sewer to be constructed in portions of their property. And that will be referred to Public Works. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Now we do the quick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'd ask for a motion to call document to the clerk's desk. Uh, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage so we can have fireworks. No, um, no, no. Alderman Montemayor, we need a motion first to actually call the document to the clerk's desk. Could you do so? I so move. Thank you. There's a motion and a second to call uh, uh, the document to the clerk's desk, and then we'll vote. We'll put that resolution on suspension. Under discussion, Alderman Penderwheel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, could you just explain what calling to the clerk's desk means? It's, I'm unfamiliar okay. with I that. I knew somebody was going to ask that. Thank you. I'd be happy to. Sure. What happens is um, all committees have referral folders that all documents are referred to your different committee. If in fact there's a document in a committee that either doesn't get acted on by the committee but it needs to come forward to the council floor without a recommendation, it's called call to the clerk's desk. I can physically pull it out of finance folder. They didn't act on something but they need it to be acted on tonight. I pull it forward and then you vote to for me to do that and then you vote on that document. It has not been talked about or acted on in that committee. So we have two documents like that tonight that were pulled out of their folders, not acted on by those committees, and it's called call to the clerk's desk. Does that help? Okay. Ru good old Robert rules of order. Okay, so there's a motion to call the document to the clerk's desk and there's a second. Under discussion, any more? If not, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now, now a motion to put the resolution upon its passage would be in order. Second. There's a motion and a second. <laughs> Under discussion. If not, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. This one, yeah, the one motion to call. As we move along the agenda, the next item on the uh, on the agenda will be a motion to convene in closed session. So moved. We have to read it. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll you have to read it. Yeah. <laughs> Alderman Alder Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.851G of the Wisconsin sta statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to Dina Matlin forfeitures. There's a motion and a second to go into closed session. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Oh, roll, call. roll call. Roll call, please. I'm sorry. Uh, second here. Okay, mm -hmm. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Oh, <laughs> Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, and Serta. 16 ayes. Motion passes. Does anybody need a two minute break, five minute break? We'll take a five minute break. <laughs> You're too anxious, Marge. <laughs> 